Hi, this is Dama. Welcome back to my channel of Books and Song. So I know it's already February, but I wanted to share with you um, some of the classic books that I want to read this year. I know that my taste usually changes throughout the year, so you know, these are just ideas that I have and books that I will, you know, most likely read. So it's not a finalized list. I might read less, I might read more, depending on, on how things go. Uh, I'm actually a pretty slow reader, so I'm hoping to get through these ones at least in terms of classics, but if, if not, I will do our best. So the books that I really want to get to this year are um, the following. I picked five just because I didn't want to do an overwhelming list, and maybe some of these books could be good ideas also for you if you're looking um, for some classics to read. So the first classic that I really, really want to get to this year, um, I think I've said it before, I really want to get more into Russian literature. So the book that I'm um, really most excited to read this year is uh, Crime and Punishment by uh, Dostoevsky. So this author is actually an author that I really, really, really want to, uh, want to finally read. I really think that I will enjoy this author just because I know that he has written wonderful just masterpieces of literature. I know that his books are really profound. I, I know that, that this is something that I, I want in a book. So he is, uh, he's an author that I definitely want to read. So Crime and Punishment in particular, from what I understand, examines uh, kind of the mental processes, the thoughts, the dilemmas, internal conflicts of a criminal of someone who just committed a crime. In this case, I think a murder, if I'm not mistaken. So this book takes place in St. Petersburg in, in Russia. And we're basically following um, an, an investigator. His name is uh, Pietrovich, who is trying to you know, find out who committed the crime. He's looking for the criminal. And then on the other hand, we also look into the mind of the criminal and kind of see what committing a crime does to him, does to his conscience, soul, heart mind everything it sounds really really cool and this is actually a book that me and my husband will be reading together we're trying to start our own classics book club so this is one of the books we'll be reading in it and hopefully we'll have a lot to talk about and discuss about this book as we as we read it read it together and then of course i'll be back to share my thoughts with uh with all of you so uh, Crime and Punishment by uh, Dostoevsky. The second book on my list here is uh, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This book I know very little about, almost nothing. All I know is that we follow, uh, it's, it's a book that's written in first person, actually. So we are following Pip, our main character, our protagonist, and we're, we'll be seeing the story through his eyes and his point of view. So I know that we follow our protagonist, Pip, um, through various stages in his life. Um, it's kind of like his um, coming of age story uh, as he goes from an orphan uh, raised in a ruler context to then trying to become a gentleman and kind of climb the social ladder as he arrives to London. It sounds very interesting. I know that uh, Dickens uh, examines his usual themes of um, social, uh, social injustice, social class, poverty so we have an orphan we're looking at you know him and his life and the, the various stages of his of his life i know that there will be uh, themes of, of love and friendship and it's supposed to be dickens is one of the best um books written by by dickens one of his masterpieces so i'm really excited about this one as well i i do enjoy victorian literature i think it's very very interesting and also very rich so this is a book that i'm looking forward to for sure great expectations by Charles Dickens. So the third book on my list is a Polish classic. Of course, we each have at least one Polish classic in all of this. And this book is The Morality of Mrs. Urska, and it's written by Gabriela Zapolska, which is a very important uh, Polish writer, a uh, Polish woman writer. This is a very interesting story. It's actually a play. Uh, as you can see, it's a short little play. And we're, um, we're basically inside the house, inside the little apartment of the Dulski uh, family. So we have um, Mrs. Dulska, her husband, uh, son, and two um, younger daughters. In all of this, there's also, of course, the servants. One of them, the main ones being Hanka, a young woman's servant. And we have as well um, some relatives of the Dulski family, especially one of the cousins who uh, becomes uh, an important character in this play. It's a wonderful, uh, satiric kind of a play where 
Zapolska, the, the, the author, is looking at the hypocrisy of the, of the bourgeois class in the late 19th century, 20th century Europe. So she's dealing with a lot of themes of, you know, social class, reputation, um, making sure you, uh, you know, you, you look good in other people's eyes, maybe without really caring much about, um, you know, the morality of some of the things that you do. Uh, she looks at um, the ideas of, of conscience, morality again, or immor immorality, all of these things hiding things or, uh, you know, trying to pretend, putting on a mask. So she's looking at all of that just by examining this, this family, um, especially the main character of Mrs. Dulska, who is the matron of that, <laughs> in that house and who is, um, who's basically this, this emblematic figure of an embodiment of this hypocrisy of the bourgeoisie, of the bourgeois class in that time period. I think definitely this was used as a criticism for the for the bourgeoisie, but I also think that um, it's 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 something very interesting for a modern reader, or I, I hope it will be interesting to the modern reader in that it once again uh, examines issues and themes that are human uh, all throughout history and throughout all different classes. Anyways, that being said, I think this can be a very interesting book. I'm very excited to, to read it. I know already going into it that it's satirical and I know that they're already kind of what to look out for, but I'm very excited to see how Zaborska will be portraying these characters and how she will be, you know, how the story will, will develop. So, The Morality of Mrs. Dulska. Another book that's part of um, the book club, the classics book club between me and my husband, is an Italian classic, a Sicilian classic, and it's called Il Gatto Pardo, which translates as The Leopard. This book is a classic of modern Italian uh, literature. It's set in Sicily. That's primarily why it was chosen by my husband. He's, he's Sicilian, so I know this book is very, very dear to him. This book explores um, Sicily. It looks at Sicily during a period of a huge transition for the region during the unification of Italy. It looks at um, changes in society following the main character who is a prince in Sicily, Fabrizio Salina. Um, I don't know much more about this book. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, but I'm very excited to to find out and to explore and to see. I know that this is a book that explains a lot about Sicily. So I think this book can definitely be an instrument or a, a way for me to have a new gaze or a new perspective or, um, on Sicily, on Italy, you know, after, after reading this book. I have more to say, I'm sure, about this book once I read it. But here it is, Il Gatto Pardo, The Leopard. I Tomasi di Lampedusa. And last but not least, I know I've shown you guys this book before. It's basically my Jane Austen um, seven novels edition. So I know for sure that I would want to read another Jane Austen novel. You've seen probably maybe, I don't know, if not, I'll link it up here, a video on uh, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I'm kind of undecided now if I want to read uh, Sense and Sensibility or Emma. Uh, I know one of the two uh, is, I think, the one I would want to read next. But if you have, um, if, if there's any Jane Austen book other than Mansfield Park that you would want me to read, leave a comment, um, leave a comment in this comment section below. Uh, and I, I, you guys can help me out pick a book that, um, a Jane Austen book uh, to read because I'm, I'm kind of on the fence and undecided. So if I go with Emma, uh, I kind of know uh, that um, a little bit about the story, not too much, but I know that it, uh, the book follows Emma, <laughs> uh, the protagonist, who, who meddles, who meddles a lot in other people's lives and who, who really is interested in pairing people up. So she kind of takes it on herself to make, um, uh, make certain people fall in love with each other, to help them end up together. And in the end, it's, it's supposed to be one of the funniest uh, of Jane Austen novels. She creates more chaos than actually helping um, her, her friends. Uh, and of course, throughout the story, she also grows and develops as a, as a character. So I'm interested to see what Emma's about. I know that there's a new movie that came out, so maybe I could also then see the, the various movies um, uh, about Emma. The other book, if I go with Sense and Sensibility, but of course, I'm also open to the uh, other ones. Sense and, Sense and Sensibility, I know, follows the story of, uh, of a family where there's, um, uh, the, the father dies, uh, the mother's left with her three daughters, 
and we mainly follow two of the oldest daughters uh, who each of them has a sort of love story that develops. I know that the sisters are very different from each other, but it is very much a story about being sisters um, as they help each other through this pretty difficult time that they're going through right after the father passes away and they're basically kicked out, being all women, kicked out of, um, of, the, of the estate and have to move, uh, move to a different house, change their lives to a much more simpler form of, uh, of, of living. Also, the characters grow throughout the story as they, you know, meet uh, potential suitors and <laughs> maybe fall in love, maybe fall out of love. I know there's uh, there's definitely the love component, which is always there uh, in Jane Austen books. So that's it for the five classics that I really, really, really want to get to this year. Uh, like I said, this list is not exhaustive. There might be more, there might be less, depending on how how fast I'll be in reading them. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I've given you some ideas. If yes, then I'm really happy about that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon with the next video. Bye.